it's it's always nice it's always nice to see the same people come back. It means we must be doing something right, which is good. Thank you. <coughs> so you may remember the talk yesterday about shoulder stiffness and how we have these layers, the outer gliding plane. We've well, dissected the outer gliding plane, the subdeltoid, subacranial, subcoronoid space. That's the outer gliding plane. Now we're into the plane in which the corridor brachialis is and the short head of biceps sits. And what we're going to do in the next 20 minutes is to see how the short head of biceps and the long head of biceps come together. We're then going to dissect between the short head of biceps and the pectoralis minor. This interval that we never ever go to. This is covered by the clavipectoral fascia. Do you remember yesterday when I mentioned underneath the clavipectoral fascia is the zone of the neurovascular plane? <clears throat> so what we'll do now is to go into the neurovascular plane, medial to the short head of biceps. And I'll show you why that's helpful, if I may. So if you look at the dissection that we have here, <coughs> so we see here, uh, you probably can see on your on your screen, here is the tendon of the long headed biceps coming down the arm, and it has the <coughs> the muscular part just starting here. And here is the short head of biceps, the aponeurosis coming down to meet it. This meets quite a long way down the arm here. Okay. Now if we come up to the top of the short head of biceps and then come across the top of the coracle, oh no, thank you. We see here the inferior border of the pectoralis minor. And here you see the pectoralis minor comes across out on the top surface of the uh, coracoid. The coracoid tip is here. This is very interesting. Now, the clavipectoral fascia bridges between those two and has fat underneath it. Now, uh, fat is very important. Fat tells you that there's a nerve close by. So in the shoulder, if you find fat, there's a nerve certainly close by. So this, like in the supraclavicular space, there's some fat tissue, and the first structure that comes obliquely from under the pectoralis minor towards this direction is this thing here, the muscular cutaneous nerve. So it's the very first structure that comes across underneath the fat, underneath the clavipectoral fascia. And this is like opening a window into the brachial plexus. So this is the first part, open the window through the clavipectoral fascia, we push the fat away, and then the first thing we come to is the muscular cutaneous nerve here. And we said yesterday that, the lat that the lat this is from the lateral cord, and the lateral cord is said to be lateral to the artery, so underneath that will be the artery of the, uh, the axillary artery. We'll come to that in a minute. So the next thing is to open the door. Let me just reiterate, that's the muscular cutaneous the axillary nerve is going to be somewhere in here. But I'm going to suggest that I can't see that yet until I find the posterior cord. So I go to now what, what I call open the door. And the, the way I happen to do this, it doesn't matter what you do, is I circumcise the tip of the coracoid. So I pull off the short head of biceps first. Thank you. And we just peel that 
of some heresy in So I've opened the window through the kind of petrol fascia and now I'm going to open the door by peeling off the short flexors from the coracoid here we are. Right. Now this now becomes a neurovascular pedicle based on the muscle epitaneous nerve. And now I can push this this way. we can see then the muscle epitaneous nerve from the other side and that nerve is anterior to this structure here which is the artery just in here there it is with the vein outside it okay now, behind that is this structure. So, just reiterate, this is the muscular cutaneous nerve, which is from the lateral cord. If I sweep that medially, then I'm taking the lateral cord away from the artery. The artery sits here, and behind it is the posterior cord. So that's the radial nerve. So that's from the artery. That's the artery, I think. Right? And then the posterior cord is behind it here in this area here is the radial nerve there. first branch will be the axillary nerve. So I get to come up here and find the nerve, the axillary nerve up in this region here. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to, I'm going to quietly keep on the section here to show you, but can I ask you to come up the lateral border of the conjoined muscles, find the medial border and the inferior border of the pectoris minor, and go through the clavipetral fascia, take the fat away, and find the muscular cutaneous nerve. Then open the door by detaching the short head and corridor brachialis, and come to see the brachial plexus. Here it is. I'm going to continue dissecting. So you carry on for a few minutes, and I'll show. You, I'll bring you back to the the table in a minute. Thank you very much. Faculty, please uh, shift clockwise. Faculty, please shift clockwise on your team. Next team.
and the artery and the vein are anterior to this structure, the posterior uh, nerve, so that's the radial nerve, and here the branch, almost certainly the branch to uh, latissimus dorsi, and then up here, and most of you found this already, um, the first natural branch of this, if I go into external rotation, is this the axillary nerve. Now you've all found that, I think, and if you haven't, we'll come back to you and we'll help you find it. Okay, so we're going to just look a little bit now at um, the anatomy of stiffness in a post-traumatic shoulder. If I come in there, actually we'll come a little bit further up here. Now, we can see here the uh, here the lateral aspect of the humerus, Thank you. and here is the coracocranial ligament. You can see that curving across here. Okay, there's your ligament. Now, if you just very gently take the, the bursa off that. Let's say that's a bit of bursa there. If you palpate under here, at the top end of the rotator mandible, up under here, at the roots of the coracoid, there is a band. Okay. Now if you get your friend to hold the shoulder and you put your finger under the coracocranial ligament to the base of the coracoid and then externally rotate, that band comes forwards to meet your finger. And we'll show that a bit more clearly by detaching the coracocranial ligament. Here we are. We'll detach the coracocranial ligament there. And here, well, this is interesting. Maybe the anatomist is right. Look, that coracle, that petrol is made to go right on into the rotator interval. It's a bit unusual. But um, anyway, up here you're looking for a band that tightens up when you go into external rotation. Just here. That band there. Going from the coracoid to the humerus, so it is the coracohumeral ligament, and it's the it's the tightness that happens in a frozen shoulder. What I'm going to do now is what's called the Ozaki release. So I'm going to cut that band at the base of the coracoid. It always bleeds, always bleeds. But if you cut that band, suddenly there's a much greater range of external rotation of the arm. This is one of the most useful releases to do in a stiff shoulder after trauma. And it seems to stiffen up even if the trauma is down here and not up there. So if you come in, you can of course do that arthroscopically. But now I've got much more external rotation. So the antero superior coracohumeral or Ozaki release gives you much greater external rotation. And if you want to prove that, what's fun to do, do you have a suture? Oh, great. And then we have a little... What you want to do is to replicate a needle holder. Oh, yeah. Now, what we can do is replicate a contracture from the top edge of the subscapularis, let's say, to the deep surface of what... Uh, well, that's not the sub, the coracocranial, but let's replicate that to the base of the coracoid there. Oops. Remember, this is just. I'm going to be very cheap. I'm going to cheat and do that. So this is a contracture of the top of the shoulder. And we'll just hold that there. And. Now, external rotation is very much a 
first section. So please um, carry on with your nerve dissection, and those of you who have not got uh, comfortable with that will come around and show you. And then I'd like you to divide the coracohemal ligament at the base of the coracoid, and then replicate the contracture or the adhesion there. And the other thing to do is down here in the front corner, we found out where the auxiliary nerve is, and that's, we can see that down here. There it is, that's it there. Now imagine that there is a contracture here between the latissimus dorsi, which is here. Okay, and we're going to include the anterior circumflex humeral because that's what's common. So let's contract, let's make a contracture here. Let's see what we can do in terms of internal rotation already, that's okay. Now I'm going to make a contracture here. And now, external rotation is almost eliminated. So that's another release that's very useful to do. And of course, if you do that release without knowing where the auxiliary nerve is, we can get into trouble. That's the importance of knowing how to get the auxiliary nerve, because that contracture is common. This one is useful to release. So that's the anterior inferior and anterior superior contractures. And I'd like you to replicate that, latissimus dorsi to subscapularis include the anterior circumflex and you see how limiting of external rotation that is. This is more in abduction. In abduction, yeah. It's abduction. Please go ahead. I will between the subscapular and the supraspinatus and the acrobat of the person with the other subdoctor. So if I go do that, it's, it's, it's good to understand the pathoanatomy of what we're dealing with. I can have, yes, and then I can do all the other stuff, and then I can, then I can cut through there because I know where the nerve is. I can do contribution here to this nerve, and that nerve has a contribution to the muscle. So, can I ask for your? Uh, your uh, kind attention. So, um, just from, we're going to have just a, a, a quick summary, one quick summary, and from each, each group, one thing to take home, one take home message from this dissection. And we go fairly quickly. So, from this group, what would you like to say your message of the morning? Yeah. Uh, we have to use the sharp dissection. Thank you. Dissection. Perfect. Yeah. So the first thing here was sharp, sharp knife dissection. What's what's one thing that you take home from the dissection? We'll know the anatomy. The. We'll know the anatomy. We'll more, more anatomy, yes. L know the anatomy. Thank you. And from this dissection. Respect to the muscle fascia. Respect of muscle fascia. Fascia is my friend. If you remember that, fascia is my friend. That's my thing. Okay, good. Thank you. And from this dissection. And reflecting it from uh, not going deep. Super. So using the fascia to help reflect the cephalic vein, not down to the cephalic vein. So we've got sharp dissection, respect for fascia, fascia is my friend. We've got know the anatomy, we've got the cephalic vein unwrapping. And here, what would you say? Uh, appearance of uh, musculocutaneous uh, after reflection uh, of uh, conjoint tendon. And Super. Uh, other uh, nerves, uh, median and down. Super. So using open the window, open the door to find the nerves. Good. And from yourselves, chaps. Identification of the auxiliary nerve. What specifically? The, the position from the um, posterior cord, like um, cord divide to, axilla, to radial and auxiliary, uh, auxiliary nerve. Yes. Also, the importance of it when we release and um, 
the, in the frozen shoulder uh, when it is to the tetanus. Okay, the you've had two goes. That's all right. That's all right. You're a good enthusiasm. The axillary nerve comes off quite high from the posterior cord, doesn't it? Yes, it's quite high. And from Omar, what do you think? I think uh, axillary nerve opposite to the upper border of the pectoralis major. The uh, axillary nerve. Close to the border yes, of teres major. Yes. So how? Uh, so to put my homens in the correct position. Uh, the homen retractor. That's a really important point. Putting the homen retractor in the position that protects the nerve. Thank you. Well done. And from this dissection table? Uh, if if uh, difficulty about the uh, tertiary pectoral dissection uh, of the tertiary pectoral group, uh, yes. group, so uh, you go about our. Now, th uh, the lesson learned from this table is that the pectoralis major and the deltoid muscle were absolutely the same all the way almost until the clavicle. So if you have a, con a, a patient where the two muscles are so close together you can't see an interval. If you go towards the clavicle, there's always a little fatty streak, and that's where we found it on this table. So it's a good lesson on this table. Go high to find the interval. Great. Next one. What did you? Oh uh, yes. Uh, to choose the uh, young and uh, muscular specimen in the next cadaver course. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. But actually, this is real life. This is real life. So we we do our best. Yes. The conjoint tendon, the conjoint tendon is the key to the musculoskeletal nerve, and the musculoskeletal nerve is the guide to all the brachial flex. Well done. You can teach on my next course. That's perfect. Thank you very much indeed. And the next table, please. What did you find here? What was your le what was your lesson of the morning from this dissection? Many things. First, uh, the deltoidectoral approach. Yes. Uh, the, the vein will find you. Or you won't find him. Thank you. The vein will find you. You don't have to find the vein. And finally, on this table, what did you say was your lesson of the day? Uh, the most important thing, the anatomy of axillary nerve, it, it differs from taller beds, uh, tall or short. Well done. The anatomy textbooks give us centimeters of distances, and they're not true. They're different in all of us, so you have to be aware. Thank you very much for your good, kind attention. You've done ever so well. Good.